afternoon, everyone. This is Nick from MacCam TV, and yes, we are back on the air. If you are watching this on 3D Game Man, you'll also know me as Ira1274. Today we're looking at a build of a low-cost server. I prefer to use Linux or other low overhead operating systems for serving needs, and in this case we're going to be using FreeNAS, which is based on FreeBSD. Okay, getting into parts, you'll see that I opted to go with the AM1 platform from AMD. Again, we're looking at what can provide the greatest performance for the lowest dollar, and I hate to say it, but AMD really owns this market. Uh, the Athlon 5350 is a 2.05 gigahertz quad-core processor with an integrated R3 Radeon. The Asus motherboard was really the only choice in this class as one that fully supports ECC unbuffered memory. And given the fact that I prefer to use ZFS, which is an alternative to software RAID to manage my data, ECC is definitely something that we want to have in the equation just to prevent any errors from creeping into the ZFS pool. One of the goals for this build was to get it as small as possible, and the Elite 361 case was not my first choice because this can actually handle a full-size ATX motherboard. But, given their choice to move the power supply to the front of the case, it still gives you that smaller size that you typically wouldn't expect, given the fact that you can install full-size components in here. I also changed over to the MediaSonic PCI Express 3 uh, controller card, and this machine is also inheriting the external enclosure and the four 2TB Western Digital drives from the previous machine. If you were watching earlier, you'll see how confounded I was by the heatsink installation for the AM1. It is the simplest thing in the world, and uh, I was looking for a more complex way to do it. There are, of course, a bunch of other cables and other miscellaneous parts that aren't in the component list. But anyway, let's just let me get onto the build here, and you'll see how terrible I am at doing this.
this little gem is a 3M command strip, the little guys that you use to stick on the wall to hang up posters or whatnot. But uh, I actually like using them inside to keep some of the wires that would normally rattle around from rattling around. A good habit for any builder is test before you bolt everything together. I went so far as to upgrade the BIOS to the latest version just to make sure it didn't suddenly dislike some other component. One of the benefits of ZFS is that you can add additional enclosures and additional drives as you go on. They will not share any of the redundancy, but it's an alternative to RAID where basically you have to replace every drive in order to increase your space. In this case, you can just add additional drives group them together, and gain that additional space. And here we are with FreeNAS version 9.2.1.9 .9 installed and running perfectly. Um, this screen actually shows I did a FreeBSD command to check and make sure the ECC was in fact operating. The one thing I'll say that's kind of a downside right now is that free BS, or excuse me, free NAS is moving away from AMD components, and I'm not sure if that's exactly where the problem is here. But this motherboard will not boot on the new release of free NAS 9.3 due to some change. They moved from the standard MBR boot record to the uh, GPT boot record. Um, sorry, you might have heard a cat in the background there. I can't do anything except throw things at him. And finally, you can see the additional plugins I have installed on top of the core functions of FreeNAS. Even under fairly heavy use, I've seen a maximum temperature on the APU of 28 degrees Celsius, which is outstanding considering the system is in a sealed cabinet with multiple drives and fairly hot memory. Overall, considering a build cost of under $225 US, excluding the drive cage and hard disk, of course, we managed to build a nice and stable system with room for expansion. Thanks for taking the time to watch this, and of course, if there are any questions, feel free to ask.